Good morning. Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ, August 23rd edition. In our announcements this morning, VBS is donating their collection to Backpacks of Love and invites the congregation to make donations as well. Non-perishable food donations for the Blessing Box will be collected on the first and third Sundays of each month. They may be placed in the designated shopping cart in Memorial Hall. Please continue prayers for Kennedy Alexander, Marge Beeman, Colin Brown, Joe Egan, Victoria Lynn, Debbie Kirk, others including my wife who had knee surgery on Thursday. I've had uh, new experiences being caretaker and nurse, I appreciate you folks who do this on a regular basis. It's just not my thing, really, but I think she's going to survive it. As always, please pray for the pastoral search committee as they work to secure our next pastor. Remember, the offering plate is in the back. Don't forget to make a contribution. And of course, Please observe social distancing. Safety is first. Okay, let's join now in the uh, call to worship. Sisters and brothers, let us recall Jesus' inaugural, inaugural sermon. God's spirit fills me, for God anoints me to tell good news to the poor. One sight to the blind. And that the time has come when God will save God's people. Join me in the unison invocation. Holy God, you call us together as a Christian community. You inspire us to prayer and praise as brothers and sisters in faith. You challenge us to listen and learn as searchers for the truth. You invite us to support each other as compassionate friends. You confront us with the injustice of our neighborhood and, and world. You send us out to show the face of Christ to a hurting world. For those times when we have not been Christ's community, listened to your call, responded to injustice, or shown the face of Christ to a world in need. Forgive us, challenge us, and renew us so we might be gospel witnesses in this world. In Christ's name, amen. The Old Testament scripture this morning is Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. In our epistle lesson this morning, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. 
do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will will be, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith of God, has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. It's my pleasure to uh, get to introduce Reverend Dennis and Reverend Linda Frishy Mori, who we met Wednesday night. The church board and staff met for a little get together, thanks to Sherry and her contribution to that effort. We had a real fun session, and we're hoping that they enjoy their stay here. I challenged Reverend Dennis to uh, give me a little write up because he was going to have to rely on me to give that introduction. And he, he, was, he was nice enough to give me a little background, and I'm going to share that with you now. They are sharing one pastoral position with the intentions to maintain a strong and pastoral ministry, lead St. John's in an examination of who we are and how we do ministry and prepare our congregation for the calling of a new pastoral leadership. Pastor Linda was born in Seymour, Indiana, and grew up north of Cortland, Indiana. She holds a bachelor's degree from Indiana State University and a master's of divinity degree from Chicago Theological Seminary. Pastor Dennis was born in Kansas City, Missouri, and grew up in the Chicago area. He holds a bachelor's degree from Northwestern University and a master's of divinity degree from Chicago Theological Seminary. Pastor Linda and Pastor Dennis met in seminary. They have two children. Son Paul is 34 years old and recently married Ashley, who has three boys under the age of seven. Paul works at Thyssen Krupp Presta in Fishers, Indiana, Daughter Sarah is 31 years old and is married to Sean. She is pastor of the Zion United Church of Christ in Indianapolis, Indiana. With that, we welcome you.
From both of us, we say good morning. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, touch our hearts and our lives in these moments as we gather as your people. Inspire us to turn our hearts and our lives to you in worship and in praise. And grant that these thy servants might speak your words. In Christ's holy name, amen. Dennis and I are certainly delighted to be with you here today and look forward to our journey as interim pastors at St. John's United Church of Christ. As we journey together over the next many months, we do look forward to that time together. We know that this month at St. John's United Church of Christ celebrates 171 years of your ministry in Vincennes and beyond. We are confident that this congregation has had a rich and multifaceted history and that as we move forward together in the future and you move forward together in the future, there is much promise for ongoing fruitful ministry and mission. We certainly do express our appreciation for the contacts and conversations that we have had over the last several months and for the preparations that were made for our arrival and for the warm welcome that we have received from so many of you. We're looking forward to working and ministering with this congregation, with members and friends, the church leadership and staff as well as those in the community. We are looking forward to getting to know you, to spending time doing that in the next several weeks and months, getting to know you as individuals and as a congregation, and becoming part of this family of friends and many hearts and voices. As together we seek to worship God faithfully, to encourage one another and to reach out and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. We understand that uh, this will be a new experience for this congregation. In addition to having two pastors who share in ministry, this interim time will be a time to prepare for the calling of new pastoral leadership. This is not a time of placeholding. This is not a time of treading water until the real pastor shows up. Together, pastors and congregation will work on six focus points. Getting to know you in the community, heritage, leadership, connections, mission, and future. Working on these six focus points will enable us to explore and answer the questions, who are we? Who is our neighbor, and who is God calling us to be? Now, in addition to the interim work, we will maintain a faithful pastoral ministry. Linda and I have worked together as co-pastors for more than 16 and a half years in two congregations, and we believe that went well. We have most recently served as the co-interims for a three and a half years, following a long-term settled ministry of a pastor who was there for 31 years. So what does co-ministry look like? We'll share leadership and worship. We'll share responsibilities for the church council. We'll share in the planning and leading of various interim ministry activities and events. We will give pastoral leadership to areas of ministry that reflect each of our own gifts. Weddings, funerals, and emergencies will often be who answers the phone and or who is available. Please feel free to either talk to either one of us about whatever. And if you have a preference of whom you wish to speak to, that is fine. Now due to the COVID-19 pandemic, most of our pastoral care will be provided by phone and FaceTime and Zoom and things like that. We will wear masks and social distance as, as, social distance as together we work at keeping each other safe and healthy. And if you feel uncomfortable with us not wearing our masks while we are preaching, we are certainly willing to do that. We do 
invite you now to hear words that come to us from the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed upon him. And then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? That marvelous passage of scripture that comes to us from Luke's gospel includes words that Jesus chose to read at the beginning of his ministry. Important words from the prophet Isaiah. Words that show that Jesus was firmly grounded in the prophetic tradition. As Jesus spoke with him, those words echoed the prophetic call experience. God's spirit was upon Jesus, empowering him as he began his mission, a mission to minister to the poor and the captives, to the blind and to the oppressed, to those who needed the year of the Lord's favor, referring to the year of Jubilee, when people's debts would be forgiven and lands would be restored to the original owner. And then, There's Jesus' short, short sermon on the text. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus used Isaiah's words laying out a vision for a mission, incorporating the best from prophetic traditions of the past, envisioning God's intention, God's vision, God's dream for his life and for the world. In some ways, we might say that Jesus was also an interim, bridging that in-between gap between what had been and the fullness of God's intention for the salvation of the world. But Jesus' interim was more than just in-between. It was full, and it was a rich, a time in between, but so much more than that, as Jesus lived out the vision of the prophet in his life and challenged others to do the same. So it is with this in-between time here at St. John's, a time that is more than just in-between. It is a time which can be and will be rich and full with ministry and mission, even as we all adjust to the COVID experience in carrying out that ministry and mission. An interim minister once wrote, it is an in-between time, in between the old and the new. It is a time when people, the people deepen their faith with a little, a little wandering and wonder in between. It's a time when people come to better understand their relationship with God. And it is a time when people learn more of how to express and live their faith. And it is more. It is a time of discerning God's vision. A time of discerning God's vision of a community of faith. The sermon is an integral part of the church. 
Discernment is the ability to see and understand people, things, or situations clearly and intelligently. I'm a member of the Southeast Association Committee on Ministry. In fact, both of us are. And we have several folk who are members of discernment. They are folks who are exploring and trying to understand where God is calling them. To what type of ministry is God calling them? Our daughter Sarah, for example, is a member in discernment. Discerning God's vision is some of the most significant work we can do together as a community of faith. And in these in-between times, we will discern and put in writing what we believe to be God's vision for St. John's United Church of Christ, Vincennes. We will be seeking God's vision for the future of this congregation as it serves this community and the world beyond. In addition to discerning God's vision, we'll work at understanding and celebrating the heritage of the church and how that affects ministry of today and tomorrow. We will lead you in examination of the area of leadership, which includes governance and policy and best practices. We will lead you in examination of the area of mission, from core values to mission statement to strengths and weaknesses and threats and opportunities. We will lead you in an examination of churches' connections in Vincennes and Knox County, the association, the the conference, and around the world. And we will lead you in a time of looking to the future and discerning who is God calling us to be. Now, Linda, it's been my experience that in between times are not just about discerning vision, but more. It is also about change. That's right, Dennis, and I, too, uh, certainly agree. And we all view change and deal with it somewhat differently. There's a bumper sticker that says, I'll keep my money, you keep the change. Well, that might be interpreted in different ways. One person said that he thinks that that's the sentiment of a lot of people. Most of us don't like change. Life brings change, every day, every day brings change of some kind, and sometimes drastic changes as we have seen over the last several months. But sometimes there are little changes that make significant differences in the lives of people or in the life of a congregation. Some of you might be wondering if the new pastors are going to bring a lot of change. Well, we're fairly certain that there will be change. Just us being up here today is a change. But not just for the sake of change. There's a story about an Anglican priest who went to serve in a different parish where things were done in a more traditional way than he was accustomed to. The priest was there for a couple of weeks when one of the members came up to him and said to him, you're not serving communion right. Our other priest always touched the radiator before taking the cup and serving the people. You're not doing that. Well, the new priest answered, that's not part of the liturgy. It doesn't make sense, so I won't be touching the radiator. Months passed by, and the new priest kept serving communion the way he had been taught, taking the wafers, putting them into the mouths of members of the church, and then giving them the cup. Then came the first Sunday in the fall when the furnace was turned on so the sanctuary would be nice and warm. The new priest was serving communion to the members, and the first member to come up to the altar for communion, when all of a sudden a spark of ecstatic electricity came from the cup to the lip of the parishioner, bringing about a reaction that wasn't very divine. From then on, the new priest would serve communion. But before he served communion, he would go over and touch the radiator, grounding himself so the static electricity that accumulated from walking on the carpet wouldn't be so distracting. 
A variety of changes will certainly come during this interim time, but not simply for the sake of change, but because they will enhance the ministry and mission of Christ's church and work in the world as it is reflected through this local congregation. But there are also traditions and customs that are worth holding on to, not simply for the sake of holding on to them, because, but because they also enhance the ministry and mission of Christ's church. We certainly are looking forward to this new journey that we're beginning with you all. And I believe in my heart that this is a time of both hope and possibility. Don't you agree with that, Dennis? Absolutely. As we journey together, this will be a time of hope and possibility, a, a hope found in a God of grace and mercy, hope found in Jesus who uplifted the poor and oppressed the imprisoned. Our journey will be filled with possibilities of new ministries and renewed ministries and missions, of new learning about who we are as God's people and what God has in store for us. What is God calling this place to be as a church that serves Vincennes and beyond? Who are we as pastor and people serving God faithfully in the world? Indeed, we are glad to be here at St. John's United Church of Christ, Vincennes, Indiana. Glad to walk beside you and with you to seek God's guidance and vision for this beloved congregation to learn and explore with you about new possibilities for ministry and mission, to be your pastors, and to celebrate both the joys and the sorrows of life as we journey with you. During this more than just in-between time, a time of rich possibilities, let us all be seeking to listen to our still speaking God and to respond to God's call. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, the still speaking God, the giver of life, the one who calls us to be the church, we come before you this day. We lift up to you, O God, those who, who are part of this congregation who may be hurting or suffering, who are ill, who are lonely, who are isolated. Pray, O oh God, that they may draw strength upon you and your Son, Jesus, that in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray for those who, who particularly su who suffer from uh, the, in the pandemic. 
a disease which we do not fully understand in ways in which we do not how, know how to deal with. We pray for those folks who are on the front lines, in the hospitals, in the grocery stores, wherever it may be, who give us the essential things that we need in the midst of all that is happening. We pray, O oh God, for for people to, to have a sense and understanding and caring for one another. That we are concerned about not only our own health, but the health of other people around us. Friends and family and stranger alike, who we may come in contact with. We pray for those who must make hard decisions whether it be leadership in the church or leadership in Vincennes or leadership in the state of Indiana or in the United States or around the world. Because these are difficult times, O oh God. Not just because of disease, but also because of lack of relationship, wars, death, destruction, famine, Whatever it may be, O oh God, you created a world that was great and wonderful, and you said it was good. Help us to find ways in which we maintain that goodness. And we pray for this congregation, O oh God, for we are in a time of transition, and we are asking for your presence of your Holy Spirit that will inspire us, that will open our minds and hearts to your will and to your way, and that together we may journey in this time, that we may better understand who you want us to be in the days to come. All these prayers we lift up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. It is not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is in the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth now as God's holy and beloved people, going into this world to love God with your whole being and neighbor as self. And may the blessings of Almighty God, who creates and redeems and sanctifies, be with you this day and forever. Amen.